Hey, hey, Waffle Gang, I do hope you're well. My name is Mark, and today we're checking out some more Reddit stories. And if you do love a Reddit story, why not consider hitting that like, subscribe, maybe that notification bell too. Let's crack on with today's first story. Much love, guys. Now, today's first story comes from a throwaway account and says, Am I the asshole here for being suspicious of my girlfriend's friend after she tried to test me? I, 30 male, have been dating my girlfriend, Olivia, 23 female, for the last one year. We met at a coffee shop near my office, which I used to frequent to get my morning coffee, and she worked there as a barista. I asked her out and she said yes, and things have been great so far. I feel we are compatible in terms of what we like and want from a relationship. She has a group of three girlfriends she is close with. These girls are always very welcoming to me, but they seem very immature compared to my friends. One of the girls, Harper, 23 female. Harper is awesome and we get along well since we like the same video games and music. Recently, Olivia and I were talking about taking our relationship to the next stage and I asked her to move in with me. She spends four to five nights a week at my place anyway, so I asked her to just move in. For some reason, her parents are the most excited about this as she is finally moving out of their house. She also told her friends about the same. On Saturday, Olivia decided to stay back at her parents' house to pack some of her things. Harper messaged Olivia and me that she and her friends were downtown and if we wanted to hang out with her. Olivia was gone, but she told me it was okay if I wanted to go out with drinks with the girls. I had nothing to do and hence I joined them. It was all three of her friends and me and we went to a few bars. We lost the other two girls midway and it was just Harper and I. I was constantly messaging Olivia about what was going on as I started to get uncomfortable with the situation. As it was getting late, I told Harper that I would get an Uber for her to drop her home. She told me that she wanted to go dancing. At this point, she was visibly getting drunk. I called an Uber for her anyway. As we were leaving the bar, Harper grabbed my t-shirt and tried to kiss me. I immediately pulled back and told her that this was making me uncomfortable and I would let it pass since she was drunk. She apologized to me and as we were waiting for an uber she started again getting handsy and told me let's go back to your place and no one needs to know i snapped at her at this point and told her please shut up until she got in the car finally the uber came and i got harper to get in she kept apologizing to me and telling me to please don't tell olivia finally the uber left and i tracked it on my phone to make sure she reached home I asked Olivia to check with Harper's roommate as she got safely to her apartment. As I was walking home, I called Olivia and told her about what happened. Olivia was crying and I was genuinely pissed at Harper's behavior. Olivia tried to call Harper at night, but her phone was going straight to her voicemail. In the morning, Olivia came home and told me, Hey, it's all good. It was just a test. I was angry at this point and I asked Olivia to explain what was going on. So Harper messaged Olivia in the morning that Olivia was really lucky and that I passed the test. I asked Olivia if she was involved in this and she did not know that Harper was going to test me. According to Harper, she wanted to make sure that I was not a cheater before Olivia moved in with me. Hence, she wanted to see if I accepted her advances. I told Olivia that Harper is full of shit because she was drunk and there is no way she was thinking straight. Moreover, when I snapped at her, she apologized and told me not to tell you anything. Harper is just trying to cover for a mistake and is giving a bullshit excuse. Olivia thinks I'm overreacting. According to her, Harper is her best friend and will never betray her. Although the test was stupid and Harper should apologize to me, she was just looking for Olivia's best interests. Also, Olivia feels nothing happened, so I should not make a big deal out of it. I just feel Olivia is dumb and cannot see that her friend tried to get her boyfriend to cheat. I just feel she is too immature to understand Harper's true intentions and it is bothering me. I told her to stay away from Harper if she wanted us to have a happy relationship. Am I the asshole to tell Olivia to not believe Harper's lies? Or do you think Harper's story checks out and I'm just overreacting? I've never heard of anyone hitting on their friend's boyfriend to test the relationship and seems like the most bullshit excuse. So in the comments, Muttfett says, here's the deal. Olivia will not drop Harper no matter what. 
You'll not be able to badmouth Harper ever without pissing off Olivia, and Olivia is going to believe Harper over you, which she's pretty much proven already. The number of red flags here is significant. Do not move this girl into your apartment. Noggin Notions Never Know says, just say okay and dump Olivia. You've not even been dating that long, but this already sets the tone for a future conflict between yourself versus Olivia and yourself versus Olivia and co. Imagine all of the future, you never put me first, and your friends are more important to you than me arguments just waiting to be had. Enticing, isn't it? Next commenter says, first, obviously it wasn't a test, and obviously Harper is just trying to cover up after herself. You already know that, so to your post, clearly not the arsehole. But going beyond, you can learn a lot about someone by their friends. If Olivia is this close with Harper, I'd be very worried about continuing this relationship. You can't tell Olivia who she can and cannot be friends with, but you can choose whether you want to be in a relationship with someone who willingly associates herself with people like Harper. And another commenter says, honestly, dude, neither answer is good. Either she wasn't testing you and is trying to cover her ass, as you suspect, which is obviously not great for a ton of reasons, or she was actually trying to test you, which just goes to show what an immature fucking moron she is. On the bright side, it seems like your girlfriend wasn't in on it and is being a little naive at worst. I don't think asking her to drop her friend is going to go over well for you though. I would recommend just letting your girlfriend know that you're upset and hurt by the treatment and will not have any further contact with Harper going forward. God, these tests. Do you, do you guys remember the story where the family was in on, on testing their relationship? Like the, the boyfriend went out to the kitchen or something, then the brother tried it on with a girlfriend. I can't remember if he grabbed her leg or something like that. I was saying, fucking hell, man. But OP comes in with her update and says, before I go to the update, let me address the issue that most of the comments were discussing. Yes, I'm aware that there is a seven year age gap between Olivia and me. It does not help that I am a 6'4 muscular dude and she is a 5'3 petite runner. I've dated girls my age, some slightly older than me and Olivia. I do not think maturity is a function of age and I've dated girls my age who were way more childish than Olivia. Out of all of my relationships, I've been the happiest in the last year with Olivia. She is not as academically gifted as I am, but, but she is ambitious and driven. She is a long distance runner runs two to three marathons per year and is finishing her fitness training certifications. I'm proud of her and she knows how to take care of herself. The relationship just works for us. Now for the update. Harper told Olivia that she was just testing me and Olivia initially agreed with her explanation. We discussed it and I told her my side of the story. I told her that Harper is bad news but it's her choice if she wants to be friends with her. Olivia was more pissed at Harper as she did not tell her about the test beforehand and had her doubts about Harper's story. I decided to drop the issue since I do not want Olivia to be broken off from her friends group because of me. Olivia just couldn't get over the incident and kept on asking me for more details every day. Finally, yesterday we had a long discussion about it. I told her that testing someone's boyfriend is a very insecure thing to do. Doing it without telling Olivia was horrible as she did try to kiss me and physically seduce me into coming to our apartment. My point was if my friend ever tried to kiss Olivia and ask her to cheat on me, I would immediately drop that friend if not do something worse. She understood that but kept on repeating. What if Harper was just acting convincingly and did something stupid but not evil? She told me that although Harper is very promiscuous, she would never try to steal someone's boyfriend also told me that Harper is the type of guy who she dates and I'm not the type of guy she would date. I don't want to admit it, but that did hurt my ego. Olivia just kept on repeating that she would never really know what Harper was thinking that night. She may be trying to test me, but got drunk and went too far. I told Olivia that maybe she should test Harper and see what was really in her mind. Olivia was confused, but went with what I was saying. I told Olivia to message Harper that she was going to visit her parents' place over the weekend and ask her to meet for brunch on Sunday. Harper replied and said it sounded great and they decided a place to meet. After an hour, Olivia and I messaged Harper from my Snapchat with just a blank image and said, thinking about you. We waited for 10 minutes and Harper replied with two topless bathroom selfies. Olivia was beyond mad at this point, but I told her to wait and see what happens next. Harper then replied saying, Hey, Olivia is gone for the weekend. Maybe I can show you this in person on Saturday. 
At this point, Olivia was just trying to keep it together. She snatched the phone from my hand, took a selfie of her face and messaged it to Harper. Harper started blowing up Olivia's phone with missed calls and frantically messaging her. Her excuse was again, I was right about your boyfriend. He is a cheat. I was testing him to see what was on his mind. Olivia did not reply to any of her messages and it took a while to console her. I felt bad blowing up their friendship, but I knew what Harper was doing that night and I felt she should not get away with it. Did I do something extremely mature for a 30-year-old guy? Yes. Did it feel good? Also, yes. I feel any person hitting on their friend's partner deserves this treatment, irrespective of their age. I don't know if Olivia and Harper would patch up in the future or how it would affect their friends group. I sometimes feel guilty for the fact that I went out for drinks with Harper and friends that led to this whole situation. Olivia does not deserve to have her best friend betray her trust in this way. So in the spirit of this subreddit, am I the asshole for testing my girlfriend's friend who tried to test me? And the top comment on that one was Ed, not the arsehole. At least Olivia knows the truth about her friend now. So are you and Olivia going forward with her plans to move in with you? You mentioned that in your original post. Opie said yes, that was never off the table for me. I know it's easy to judge Olivia based on one incident. We've been dating for almost a year and I'm excited for her to move in. And in the comments, they were pretty much all over the place. Some people you're saying, you know, this isn't the end. Although it was concluded that this isn't the end and Harper will be back at some point in the future. Other people finding the update a bit weird about him talking about their maturity, yet, you know, he's seven years older than her. And, and the, uh, the academically gifted comment, which just seems to pop up out of nowhere. <laughs> but what do you guys make of this situation? What do you think about the Uno reverse test? Let us know your thoughts down in the comments below. And let's move on to another story. And our next story does have an update as well from the user I killed a teddy and says me 27 male with my wife 26 female. I washed her childhood stuffed animal and destroyed it. Oh, oh no. My wife has a stuffed animal that she has had since she was born. We call it Teddy, even though it is a dog. Anyway, she loves that fucking stuffed animal. It is, uh, was her favorite thing. Her grandmother, who passed away when my wife was 10, gave it to her, and it has kind of been her security blanket throughout her entire life. When my wife's mother would get physical slash abusive, she would clutch the thing and cry. She told me on more than one occasion, her mother tried to throw it away as she got older. She had to dig through the trash and save it and hide it from her mother until she was away at college. At one point, when she was younger, her mother threw it in the dryer and singed the hair and laughed when she gave it back to her. Her mother wasn't a nice person. Oh no shit. But that's neither here nor there. I'm just trying to tell you the connection she has with Teddy. Whenever she's been sick or had an injury slash surgery, Teddy has been in bed with her, comforting her. Anyway, a few weeks ago, my wife found out she was pregnant. We haven't told anyone yet, hence the throwaway account and I've been trying to keep my wife healthy throughout the flu season. She works as a teacher, so we've been trying really hard to be sanitary. Long story short, Teddy was filthy, just absolutely disgusting after years of cuddling, sweat, tears, drool, and the occasional trash dive. I've been after her for years to wash the thing, but she was against it because of the dryer incident. I was finally able to convince her last night that it was time to wash it for health's sake. We washed it on delicate and then put it on tumble dry. The tag was so faded and frayed that you couldn't see the washing instructions. But a dryer is a piece of shit and Teddy got caught somehow and was ripped apart inside the dryer beyond repair. My wife is absolutely devastated and I feel so ridiculously guilty. I kept apologizing and, and she kept crying. She took the day off work today, partly because she's having bad cramps from the pregnancy partly from sadness of losing the favorite thing from her childhood. She was up in bed this morning crying because she was sick and also because she didn't have Teddy to be there with her. I feel like I fucked up something fierce here Reddit. How do I fix this? Is there a way to fix this? How do I make this all better? And the first edit says, I had no idea that these things could be fixed so easily. Users have been PMing me Etsy links, stuffed animal hospitals and seamstresses that can fix these things. 
I'm going to gather the remains of Teddy tonight and send a photo to one of these people, one of which is in the same state we are. Hopefully they'll be able to fix Teddy as and possibly make him look like he did even before his mum melted him in the dryer the first round. If that isn't an option, then I'm going to do what another user called Skyscan1 suggested and use Teddy's remains to make a few more stuffed things for the future baby. Thanks for the help, guys. And that was my thoughts as a program on UK TV called The Repair Shop and people bring in various like antiques or, or items that they love to be repaired. And there's a woman in there. I think there's a couple of women in there who, who repair like teddies and, and stuff like that. And they do an amazing job with these things, like brand new, you know, whilst being considerate of the things that, that mean a lot to them. So that, you know, you may want to keep the fur on it because it smells a certain way, etc., etc. So yeah, I'm not surprised that there's, like there's, there's animal hospitals and people repairing them on Etsy and stuff like that. So I'm glad people did point that out to OP. I may have mentioned it before. When I was younger, I used to have like this, this stuffed dog. I used to, it was like in a sit, sitting position. It was about two, maybe three feet tall. And one of my favorite things to do when I was younger was just brush its hair. And it was just like a, a comfort thing more than anything. And one day when I got a bit older, I gave it up to a younger family member. And you know, I regretted it soon after. Still think about that doggo to this day. But edit two says, Today I learned Reddit loves stuffed animals, like a whole lot. I did not anticipate this much help and support. Seriously, thank you all. And just jumping back in, because we covered a story recently where we was talking about stuffed animals and, and naming them and, and what they mean to you. And, and there was a load of comments from our own community talking about it. And it just really touched my heart to listen to it to all of you who's got like your own and I, I just thought it was wonderful to be honest edit three a friend of her family is a professional seamstress and said she could get teddy back right as rain I would have taken any one of the seriously 10 plus redditors that said they would do it for free but the convenience of the friend is too good to pass up she also said she'd do it for free so not only should teddy get fixed he should be good and we don't have to worry about him getting lost through shipping the wife has hope, but it is tempered at the moment. I'm excited to see how it turns out. I showed her this thread and all the support that came with it, and she was moved to tears. If the seamstress doesn't get it all together, then she will entertain the builder bear idea. Thanks again, guys. So these were the relevant comments. Anna Marie says, what about getting a new Teddy? Since you're having a child, I would sell it as Teddy 2.0. New chapter in life, new stuffed animal. This Teddy could be your child's Teddy and she can vicariously relieve her joy through him slash her. Opie says there is no replacing Teddy in her heart. As corny as that sounds, she loved that damn stuffed dog. I don't think she could live vicariously through her kid's stuffed animal. Not that she wouldn't get joy from seeing her kid happy with one. And this was Skyscan's comment and says, This is an idea. Maybe not a good one, you decide. Ever heard of Builder Bears? It's a place where parents take their kids and they can pick a teddy bear out and fill it with fluff and a cloth heart and, and the store closes the seams. Could you take the parts with your wife's stuffed doggy to one of these places and place some doggy parts inside a new bear? Or find someone who could repair and refluff the original one? Monteron says, I think you should combine this with Anna Marie's idea. Buy two builder bears, fill them both with teddy remnants and give one to the wife and one to the new child which OP responded and said that actually might be kind of super sentimental. We'd even do a few of them in the event that we have more kids. We want more than one, but now at least. <laughs> and that way she could share that bond with her kids. I like it the more I think about it. And Teddy is Fuba. There's no going back there, but I do like the idea of adding Teddy's parts into the guts of a new stuffed animal. I know that would be great and sentimental for her for the baby's sake. I just don't know if that would actually relieve any of the grief at this moment. Thank you for that suggestion though. I think it's a great idea long term. So OP did come back in with an update and says, Teddy lives. <laughs> Teddy is patched up and he's clean. Seriously, thank you to everyone that offered to help out. The fact that so many anonymous people on the internet were invested in helping out my pregnant wife was amazing. She got him back over the weekend from a family friend and he looks great. We also got her on some new prenatal vitamins that don't have iron in them, so she's feeling less sick all the time. So that's good too. I'm taking a half day to take my wife to the doctor for our first ultrasound today. 
Commenter says, I'm glad that it worked out for you. Can you tell me how you fixed it? I really need to wash one of my girlfriend's stuffed animals, but I'm terrified of destroying it as well. OP says, we asked a family friend who was a seamstress to put him back together. She said it wasn't even the worst she had seen and you can't even tell anything happened to him. He looks that good. My suggestion to wash your girlfriend's things is to read this thread and the last. There's tons of suggestions of what I'm going to do next time. Did you know that women have lingerie bags to wash things? Apparently you can use that or a pillowcase to wash them, then air dry. I've learned my lesson. Rose says, what was her reaction? Opie says, she squealed with joy, hugged it and slept with it the past two nights. Might have been a tear or two of joy. These bloody onion ninjas sneaking around again. Oh, dearie me, that's got me with a little tear of joy as well to know how happy she is and she got her stuffed animal back, you know, and people, like OP said, the anonymous people coming in to make suggestions, to help, saying send it to me and I will fix it for you for free. There are some absolutely wonderful humans out there. But now I'm going to turn this one you guys and it's so nice to to end the video with a lovely wholesome story like that but what do you guys make of this situation let me know your thoughts down in the comments below and just a huge thank you from the bottom of my heart for getting involved in today's stories your love your support your time always means the absolute world to me so thank you so so much and hopefully i'll see you in the next one take care and much love